Have you ever sung around? I bet you have, even if you're not sure what one is. For example, Frere Jacques. Have you ever sung the song Frere Jacques where you start singing and then a couple of bars in, a couple of measures in, somebody else is going to come along and start singing the same melody but a little bit behind you and then after that someone else comes in and this kind of musical texture is a bit different from the sort of melody and chords homophonic type texture we were just looking at because there's something quite different going on here each of these strands is a kind of independent thing it's it's sort of doing its own thing so each of these is a is a perfectly satisfactory melody on its own and they're not necessarily working together as such we do hear chords coming out of this music because of the way that the strands interact but we can think of each of the different colors on this little diagram as being three very separate musical features that, are, that aren't really that related a round is one example of a type of texture called a polyphonic texture A polyphonic texture and again let's do our little trick of breaking down this word into smaller parts and so we're going to take poly and that means many and phonic again still means sounds so a polyphonic texture is one where there are many different strands of the music that have their own kind of independent identity so a round is a really good example of that Nowadays in modern music, in a lot of pop and rock music, polyphonic textures are pretty rare. Most of the time we are dealing with a homophonic melody with accompaniment type scenario where you've got the lead singer of the band singing out their melody and the rest of the band is there purely to accompany them. But if you were to go back in time to the 17th and 18th centuries, this sort of, this sort of music with this sort of texture was a lot more common. And the master of writing polyphonic textures, well, this has to be the one and only Johann Sebastian Bach, who was a master of polyphony or counterpoint. And counterpoint just means where you have these independent melodies, just like this round, that come together to form music, but all the different melodic strands are quite separate. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a roundup of the three main types of texture that we're likely to come across in any kind of Western music. If it's just a single melody line with no real accompaniment, then it's likely to be a monophonic texture. If we start to add things like harmony and chords to support that melody, then we might be looking at a homophonic texture, one where there is a very clear melody and then the rest of the music is working together with that melody. In other types of music, just like this one, we might see something where the independent strands of the music are not necessarily working together for the same common goal. They all have their independent features and they're, they're working independently of one another. We'd call this a polyphonic texture and we have to look a little bit further back in history to when these were really, really common.